Hi everyone, I'm Nico from the Decentraland team, and in this video I want to show you how you can import your own assets into the builder so you can use them in your scenes in the Decentraland. So as you probably know, there's a nice wide selection of things that you can already use in the builder, and there's quite a lot to choose from, but if you're a 3D model yourself, or if you want to find other things out there on the internet, you're welcome to import your own 3D models into the builder. To do that, all you have to do is click here where it says, in this plus sign, or down here where it says New Asset Pack. And this will take you to a screen where you can simply drag and drop files into this window here. Note that only formats GLB and GLTF are supported for 3D models. Other formats aren't supported, however, it's easy to convert from one to the other. If you want to know more about this, you can check out our documentation about that. In docs.thetransferland.org, you'll find that there's a whole section about 3D modeling, and you'll find the recommendations and instructions to export models into supported formats from different tools, depending on what you're more comfortable with. So in this case, I'm going to grab some files that I already had ready for this and just drag them in here. So note that in some cases, um, files include more than simply a .gltf. They also may include a .bin or some .png files that might include the textures. If that's the case, then what you need to do is compress the file into a .zip and import that. Um, some of these, so here we go. These are my files that I wanted to import. Some of these come from Google Poly, which is a great place to find 3D models. What's great about that is that there's a lot of things that are in a low poly aesthetic, which matches a lot of what we have in the central end and are easy to import. And also you can directly export things in GLTF format. Just go to download and you can pick GLTF as a format right here. So let's import our assets here. And we can name each asset, for example, here it named this table archive. Let's just name it table. And we can add some different tags to make them easier to find or put them in different categories. And we can just go over all the files we're importing and continue. And we can also name our asset pack something more, I don't know, easier to find, like my So let's create the asset pack, and now we will have this available to use, not just in this scene, but in any scene that we use here in the builder. So now you'll notice that we have a new folder down here, which contains all of the assets we just imported. And we can just add them to the scene as we would with any other asset. You notice that the proportion of the things aren't necessarily, you know, as we imagine them, because, yeah, there is no standard for the sizes of things in the internet just happens to be one of those things where everyone kind of follows their own gut. So yeah, to make things completely compatible with the central lens sizes, you may have to use the resize tool. So if we go into the world, we can see our cool models in here in place. And yeah, the realism in this model is outstanding. They got it right to every the last tiny detail. But the big problem is that I can walk right through my car and that's probably not what I want, but there's a, an easy fix for this. So if I look for the invisib invisible wall smart item here, I can simply drag it into my scene and rescale it at will so that it covers roughly the same space as my model. And with that, I can give my model what appears to be its own collider. And now, if we go back into the world, that block will no longer be visible, but I can no longer walk through my car. Now, if you want to work with colliders that are you know, more, more precise and more detailed, you, you can also model them yourself. If you go to the documentation once again, you'll see that there's a whole section about colliders. And if you import your model into any editor and add a underscore collider mesh to your model, it can simply, you know, have a collider which is more geometrically accurate to what you want in your model. The final thing I wanted to show you is a little trick that if your models include animations like these, they will be played on a loop in the scene as well. So 
So now if I go into the preview, I can see these models animated. Note that these animations will be always playing. There's no way to start them or stop them. So if you want to use that in a scene, keep in mind that they will always be animated. This guy will always dance and this bird will always fly no matter what. But it's nevertheless a great way to add more life into a scene, of course. So that's all I wanted to show you today. Hope this is helpful to you and that you can take great advantage to make your scenes even more interesting in the central minute. Thanks for watching. Bye.